Helmet technology continues to evolve, but the manufacturing process is oftentimes done completely by hand. That's definitely the case here at Impact Racing in Indianapolis. For crew style helmets, there's a choice to be made between straight fiberglass and a mix between fiberglass, Kevlar, and carbon fiber. Eight layers are hand laid with resin across the forehead and another six layers, again, hand laid with the same resin across the top and around the back. Now this resin sets up pretty quickly and when it's dry and cured, you can knock it out of the mold. The shell that comes out of the mold is a little bit rough. It's nice and smooth from the mold, but any place that there's a seam, it needs to be sanded. Time then for these specific templates for the style of helmet that is being prepared. You lay it over the face shield and do some grinding and be sure that it's gonna fit the face shield exactly how you want. Once the shell has been sanded, it's time for primer. Once primed, if you're doing a custom design on your helmet, you might send it to a custom painter and then it'll be returned for the final assembly process. If not, it's time to apply the standard colors. Once painting is complete, it's time for assembly. And this is done completely by hand. First, the inner liner, that's made of a polypropylene bead material. Again, that's the impact resistant part of the helmet. That's designed for multiple impacts. Then the comfort foam, again, already hand sewn with Nomex around the outside, is placed inside that liner and taped into place. Once this is installed inside the shell, you add some hardware, put in the rest of the padding, and you're good to go. There is a random sampling that makes their way into this room. This is a helmet testing apparatus, essentially the same device that's used for Snell certification. So this helmet can be raised to a height of as high as nine feet and dropped on these various anvils to be sure before this helmet goes out the door, it exceeds its certification. Mm -hmm.